Hey, uh, thank you everyone for joining us for WWD's first ever Google Hangout. Um, we are live in LA right now from the WWD Digital Forum at the Hammer Museum. And I'm based in New York at the WWD New York office. And so we have three LA-based bloggers here. Um, and so we're going to talk about all things digital. And so we have um, Jerry Hirsch from Because I'm Addicted. We have Rachel Decoot from Everything Holler and Sophia Rossi from Hello Gay Girls. So if you guys maybe just want to introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about the background of your blogs and I guess starting with Jerry. Hi, I'm Jerry and I'm the creator of the blog Because I'm Addicted and also TV, which is all how to videos. I started my blog in 2005, so I'm sort of the OG of the space. And Rachel? Hi, I'm Rachel from the blog Everything Holler. I started the blog in 2012 and I originated with New York Fashion Week, but I'm based here in Los Angeles. And it's a personal style blog and I cover events and runway. And Sophia? Hi, I'm Sophia, and I um, started Hello Giggles about three years ago with my business partner, Zoe Chanel and Molly MacLear, and it's basically like an aggregator of content of um, some of like, our favorite contributors and stuff. So we go from fashion to lifestyle and um, comedy. Humor is a big part of it. Great. So... One of the, I mean, the thing about the digital landscape is that it's constantly, constantly changing, especially in terms of social media. Um, we have something like Instagram, which a few years ago, you know, none of us were using, and now, you know, it's like one of the first things that all of us check when we wake up in the morning. So, I'm interested in t in hearing about your social media strategies. Um, do you guys promote every single thing that you post, and and also, like, I know Jerry, since you've been around since 2005, like, how has your social media strategy evolved since the inception of your blog? Right. <laughs> For, I do, do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you, starting in 2005, it was pre-YouTube, pre-Twitter, pre-Pinterest, Instagram, so it's really been a learning curve and trying to stay up with the trends. I definitely do a lot of reading and research on best practices, um, and I try to stick to some sort of calendar. So Instagram, for example, after meeting with somebody from Google, they told me that the best times to post is every day at 9, 12, and 6, and to be very consistent with three times a day. And I, I loosely try to stick to that. In terms of Facebook and Twitter, I do seed quite a bit of my content because social is obviously driving a huge portion of traffic, but I try to find a happy medium, and I try not to post the same thing on any one of the platforms because I don't want to you know, be too overwhelming to, to followers. And how about you, Rachel? Uh, I agree with Jerry. I think each platform has its own language and cadence that it's developed based on the demographics. So studying analytics and studying what your readers are responding to, I think, is the key thing for social media because it's constantly evolving and you just have to stay ahead of the game. So that's my strategy. And how about you, Sophia, with Hello Giggles? Um, I think the good thing about Hello Giggles is um, we try to use every platform for different reasons. Like, we definitely use Tumblr for more, like, nostalgia. And then for Instagram, since you can't link it, and that's very much, like, direct of um, just images. And Facebook is our number one sharing tool. So we probably get 60% of our traffic comes from Facebook still because I think it's more long form. And then Twitter, we try to like involve the people in our stories and you know, at you know, reply them and stuff like that. But it's nice to use them in different ways. I think that's what's good about it is that not to just you know auto send feed to everything out. Yeah, and I mean, just sort of on the end of that, do you guys have any tricks for engaging your followers online? I know you know a lot of social media strategy can really be trial and error. Are there, are there any tricks? Like, what do your readers find most engaging? Have you ever tried anything that hasn't worked, um, that maybe didn't garner the page views and the response that you thought it would? Um, I think asking questions is really the thing that um, our community responds to, because it allows them to be 
involved and not necessarily questions that have to do with the post like maybe more um, topical stuff and people like to you know engage in that right how about you guys uh, Jerry on leaf TV's Instagram account since we only produce video that's our core competency we started doing insta videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday and we found that the engagement on those is really strong and that's not something that I, a lot of people I think have quite figured out as high quality video content on Instagram um, but it definitely is resonating right and how about you Rachel uh, for, for me, I think Twitter's kind of been the most profitable in terms of engaging with the readers. Um, just gaining the response back has been fun for me to kind of engage with them. Um, what hasn't worked is definitely just blasting the same thing on all channels. I didn't get a good response when I started doing that early on, uh, when I first started blogging. So just kind of adapting um, what they wanted to see, I think it's helped. Right. We actually have um, an audience question here that was submitted by Mary Hall. Um, she's the Google Plus user, the Recessionista. So she's asking, what social platform do you have the most engagement with your fans on? Um, out of, you know, maybe Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. What's the most used platform for you guys? Jerry. Uh, well, the, this is sort of a strange answer, but in terms of engagement, just looking at analytics, the strongest platform for me is Pinterest because on my blog there's a ton of imagery. So without having to engage with my users directly, they're pinning a lot of the content and driving a lot of traffic. Right. And how about you, Rachel? Um, hey, Mary. Uh, I would say Twitter for me personally is you can link, and I really like to utilize hashtags. Um, Instagram would be my second platform that I utilize the most and get the most response from um, in terms of driving um, just brand awareness, but driving traffic to the blog, I would definitely say Twitter. And um, Sophia? Yeah, I mean, again, I think that it's Facebook. I know that sounds really dated, but um, our uh, our community or our audience is definitely still on Facebook and they love sharing content and I think that sometimes um, Twitter just happens so fast that you don't necessarily have a chance to like really engage in what the content is so with Facebook it sort of feels a little bit more permanent than Twitter. Right. Pinterest I would love to say be good at but like I don't really have a good visual eye so like no one really wants to see my Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> right. I actually feel like people are using Facebook like they used to use Pinterest a bit more. Do you, are you guys seeing that too? Like it's more of a news feed. Um, I feel like I'm one of the weird people who's into my news feed, but like it's probably because I'm like a weird internet detective. But um, otherwise, I don't know. I mean, I I feel more comfortable on Facebook, but I do think it's the the demo is changing on it. Um. Sort of going off of what Sophia was saying with Twitter, it's, you know, there's such a rapid pace of tweets now. It's, you know, some things can get buried. And just also the online space is, is so crowded with blogs. So I'm interested in how, how do you guys make your blogs and websites stand out in the digital landscape? Um, you know, when you launched your sites, did you feel that you were providing something that was, you know, maybe lacking in other blogs? Or um, I guess, Jerry, we can start with you. I know you've been around the longest, so... Jerry. <laughs> I'm so, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I guess what was the question? Rachel? Oh, the question was, how do you make your blog or website stand out in the digital landscape? Um, you know, when you first launched it, was there something that you felt that you were providing that was otherwise lacking? Let me think of how to say that. Um, we're to I have a really poor connection right now. That's okay. So okay, so we'll go to. I can hear. Yeah, I can say. I mean, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sophia, why don't you answer? Um, well, one of the reasons we started Hello Giggles is um, Zoe, Molly, and I felt like we were constantly sending each other links of um, things that we wanted to personally read, and we were sort of sick of gossip. But um, obviously, secretly, we love it. But then we were just feeling bad about ourselves always. Um, so we wanted to do a site where we had things were relevant, not necessarily topical. So, you know, you'll see like a live kitten cam, but at the same time, like it'll be like, should, you know, Chris Brown be allowed to perform at the Grammys? 
because I think that what we were feeling like we lacked is a place where like there's a narrative uh, from females that had some humor. You know, like I personally like love Gawker and Jezebel so much. Um, I just sometimes feel like they are like you know the older sister I wish liked me. So I feel like it's a little bit less um, approachable to me. I definitely read them all the time. I just am like scared that they like me you know so I feel like hello giggles I wanted to create a community that you could post um, and feel like you would get some good feedback and we really monitor our, um, our comments so it's all about um, like positivity and encouraging people to write which I think is you know one of the more vulnerable things you can do is to write something right yeah I know you guys have like a no a no gossip no snark no cursing policy so that shows that you're sort of pretty aware of your readership and the age, and it seems like you guys are trying to promote, like, a positive community. Yeah, and just sort of, like, less reviewing books, and you can have your opinion, but we don't need to bash anyone. Like, we all know how hard it is for anyone to do anything now. Right. How about you, Rachel? How do you feel that you distinguish your site amongst other style blogs? Um, at first, I I really just kind of followed in the footsteps of other style bloggers, um, and I you know started with the top ones like the Blonde Salad and Cupcakes and Cashmere, just kind of studying what they did and what social forums worked for them, and then from there I kind of developed my own um, voice and my own language, if you will, uh, based on the feedback and you know studying analytics and my readers. Um, but I would say, I mean, mainly just to diversify, I, I have a fashion background and I'm kind of geeky when it comes to fashion and its history, so, you know, the way that I stand out is with a lot of the events and the subjects that I cover. Um, you know, historical things like the anniversary, 40-year anniversary of Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress and, you know, New York Fashion Week and counterfeit Louis Vuittons. Right. Um, so, another thing that I'm interested in is how important do you guys think it is to really know your audience and have a sense of who your audience is online, and have you found that over time that your demographic changes at all? Um, I guess, Sophia, we can start with you. Um, yeah, I think that ideally we call it the Gilmore Girl generation, where, um, mothers and daughters can be on the site. So I'd like it to think that the girl who is um, going out with like an inner tween that we're like 13, I would like for the inner tween to grow with us. And I think that we're seeing that. I thought we were really um, 15 to 24. And apparently with we just some more um, analytics and we are 18 to 32. So I think that a lot of our audience um, wishes they were young, and then our audience that's young wishes they were older. So it's sort of that combination. Right. But and by the way, I'm very excited to say that there's 27% male readership. So whether it's people's boyfriends, husbands, or dads, there are still many to see kittens. Right. And how about you, Rachel? Have you... Um have you noticed a change in your readership, and do you think that it's important to really sort of know who your audience is? Oh, ab absolutely, 100%. I love studying the analytics because they do change um, on a fairly regular basis, and along with Sophia was saying, you, you have an idea when you first start out of what your um, demographics are going to be, and I thought it would be probably 32, and then as I study them, it, it changes from... I get a ton of tweens, and then, you know, depending on what type of content I put out, I get, you know, 32 and up. So I, I think in terms of studying them, you kind of have to function as a business or as a brand would, and I think analytics are just as important to me in developing my brand, my blog, as it would be for, you know, any big company. Right. Um, um, Jerry, do we have you back, or? Um, so, Jerry, I want to go back to the other question, because I think it's interesting in that you've been around since 2005. So, I'm interested to know how you distinguish your blog in the online space. Like, And when you first launched it, did you feel that you were providing something that was otherwise lacking in the fashion blog world? Okay, so we will we will move on then. Um, so I guess 
I know, you know, Sophia, I know that I'm not sure how involved Hello Giggles is in, in the fashion world in terms of attending fashion shows. I know that you guys cover beauty and style. I'm not sure, like, how integrated you are with that. But in terms of, you know, Rachel, I know that you said you, you do cover runway shows and events. Um, and there's there was sort of a backlash recently against, you know, bloggers attending and, and people feeling like fashion shows have become really overcrowded and that there are too many people in attendance at fashion shows that don't have a, a real connection to the clothes. Um, so I'm interested in, to know what your thoughts are on that and, and I guess where you see it sort of going. Um, I could talk about that subject for about three hours, but I won't. Um, as a blogger, I, I know that our influence is I know that people shop off of blogs now, um, and, and I understand, you know, how important we are to certain brands. In terms of runway, like I said, I'm a history geek back in the day with the coach houses when they didn't used to do their runway, but in terms of what the press was allowed to get away with, it was a pencil and a piece of paper. Um, now, when I'm on the runway, um, covering the New York Fashion Week. I literally have my Canon in one hand taking high quality photos. I've got my phone in the other doing a live stream on Twitter and Instagram and the fashion and the styles are instantaneous. Um, they reach the customer within seconds of it walking down the runway and you know on one hand it's kind of a weird concept for the designers they think to get used to because it is so different from the meaning behind the style and their designs and, and you know, uh, the mystery is gone in that sense, so I, I relate to them, but it's kind of, it's where it's going, you know, it's digital, things are fast, I mean, the lead time is 24 seconds versus what used to be 24 hours, so I'm, you know, part of the change, um, but I get what they mean, you know, from their perspective, and, you know, I'm headed to New York Fashion Week next Wednesday. Um, to cover the fall and winter uh, fashion, so I'm super excited. But there are, definitely has been a change in terms of how many shows I'm attending this year, who's allowing bloggers, who's not allowing bloggers. Um, so it's I, I'm interested to see how it pans out this season for sure. Okay, cool. And we are going to answer an, another audience question um, from the Google Plus user Calvin Iverson. And it's something that I was going to ask you guys anyway. So I wanted to talk about the business of blogging um, in terms of partnering with brands and advertising. And, and Calvin's asking, do you work with brands often? How do you navigate sponsored posts and gifts from brands? And can you share any best practices? So I guess maybe Sophia, do you guys at Hello Giggles um, work with brands often? And yeah, how you we had one of my favorite partnerships we had was with The Gap and we um, did, we went to Bonnaroo with them, and we helped them do this tent that was about like DIY shirt making and then storytelling, and it was really a way to like incorporate a brand that we really enjoyed, but not have it be so direct, you know. And then we did a few like web videos for them. We also worked with a company called Teleflora, which we actually helped us launch our company by doing a branded video for them. Um, and I think the most um, exciting part about working with brands is how like you can do more um, like they call it like obviously native advertising you feel like you get to like really create something with the brand that's not necessarily exactly on brand like our job is not to you know deliver their message it's to deliver their message through our audience so I think that's really fun about it and how about you Rachel um, working with brands, I mean, that's my bread and butter. I feel like I'm constantly on the hustle. Um, you know, bloggers need content. I think that was said earlier today at the summit. Um, and we're constantly delivering content to brands in terms of what trends are in, are in style right now. So the way that I do a lot of my brand sponsored posts, uh, when I first started out, I, like I said, I'm constantly hustling. So I would reach out to them myself. And in terms of the guidelines, it was who I felt matched my personal style. So if I liked Wild Fox Couture, I would reach out to them. Um, you know, and that was literally just by going on their site and trying to find the best email. Then eventually, as my blog got more popular, PR firms and their, the brand's representation um, would reach out to me directly. 
and we would build a relationship that way. Now it's evolved, and this sounds crazy even to this day, but you know, bloggers, including myself, where we have managers and agents who help doctor these brand opportunities. Um, so when you combine all three, it's a lot easier to have, you know, to develop a cadence with brands and work with larger brands. Um, like most recently, I've been working with Target, Cover Girl, Marc Jacobs. So, you know, when it started out with me trying to contact local LA designers, so it's it's kind of cool. But I mean, I love working with brands. And again, it, it all you know kind of depends on your personal style and, and making sure it's a good fit. Great. And then I guess just to wrap it up, um, where do you guys see yourself in the future? What do you think not only you know the future for you looks like and for your sites, where do you hope to be you know, in, in say five years and what do you think that the future of blogging will look like? Um, Sophia? Yeah, I mean I hope that um, Hello Giggles will be more of a media company that we can allow. We have over 1,500 contributors and I would love for them to have um, <coughs> sorry, um, I would love for them to have their own platforms and sort of create, you know, help them create TV shows and other brands within our world. And I'd hope that in five years that um, we'll have a better system for uh, live stream because that's something that I think that uh, we could really fix the having more communication with our contributors and forums. I wish that were a little bit better. But yeah, I think the idea is to just support the people that are already with us and hopefully give them more creative opportunities. And how about you, Rachel? Um, in terms of, hey, by the way, we just got joined by Jerry. Hi, <laughs> hey. Rough connection up there. Here, students. <laughs> so in terms of where I see the blog going, I mean, I'm fairly new compared to these two gals, so I would say I really want to emulate the ones that have paved the way for newer bloggers like myself and then also lend my area of expertise being in the fashion industry and coming from a marketing background. I would love to travel with the blog. I would love to go around the world um, and bring international brands to America in terms of awareness and American brands internationally in the same breath and you know I don't necessarily consider myself a style expert um, but I would like to become one um, so that's that's my plan. Great and how about you Jerry I know you just joined us again but basically I'm just asking you know where do you see the future of blogging going and where do you see your own blog in, you know in say five years time? Uh, you know I, I think there's a lot of room for mobile and obviously an explosion of Instagram and Vine, but I think we're going to continue to see that landscape explode. Um, like we, there have been that, that there's like Pose and a couple other apps, but the breakout fashion blogger apps I think are still are still on the rise. And mobile obviously is like one of the biggest facets of the internet in terms of uh, commerce and girls that are monetizing that way really need to be paying attention to, to what's happening there. Great. Okay, well thank you guys for joining us today. And for thank you. Your day. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. guys. Sorry that I dominated this whole hangout. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.